Well, Project Country Club is finally up and running, so let's dive underneath the hood and take a look at what we had to do to get this thing to run. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage, and if you followed along at all with Project Country Club, I suggest you drop a subscription so you don't miss out on future videos because we're doing something very unique here. We are tuning the Cadillac XLR for now. We happen to maybe have a 5.3 liter headed this way, but before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and boost some power on this. I think we're going to bottle feed it, so you don't want to miss that out. It's going to be pretty unique. It's already unique, and I'm guessing it's probably about the only XLR that's running on the Holly Terminator Max X system. Now, why did we choose that one? One, it's economical. It was about a thousand bucks for the drive-by wire setup without the little LCD. We're probably going to go to the bigger digital dash one of these days. Who knows? We're going to see how much of the factory dash that we can get working. I'll tell you right now that we've got about half of it going. Uh, battery works, fuel works, uh, RPMs work. Speed does not work yet, but we have a solution for that thanks to the PCS2000 transmission controller, which we'll dive in. Thanks to Nick for that unit, by the way. Happened to have one sitting on the garage, donated it to the garage, and it is working pretty good so far. It needs a little bit more tuning. But before we get to all that, let's dive underneath the hood, take a look, and be aware that some of the wiring still has not been cleaned up yet, but for the most part, you can get an idea of what is going on. Okay, hopefully you can see everything all right. We got a lot going on in here uh, in that we use the LS1, LS6 style harness. The main reasoning being that the injectors were set up with the same style connectors, the EV6. I did have to do a conversion on the ignition coils over to the LS1 connectors. That was the biggest problem that we had because I used the diagram that they had. I wired everything up where A was going to one because that seemed logical couldn't get the thing to run. It turned out to be backwards. Uh, a was eight and, uh, you know, and so forth. So B was, you know, seven instead of two. And so instead of going through and rewiring all of this stuff, uh, I just went in and changed the firing order based off the new uh, count on ignition coils. Normally, you're not going to run into that issue. This is a weird situation with it being a North Star. This is cylinder one, not here. It is backwards, and that is because of the way that the North Star was originally uh, a transverse front wheel drive style setup. Uh, they put cylinder one to be the closest to you, which would normally be this cylinder whenever you open the hood. So everything's backwards on this. But that being said, you can do that in the software, change the firing order. That was pretty straightforward. The other side that we tried to do was use the exhaust cam sensor, which is a 1X sensor, uh, much like uh, a uh, 24X setup, which has a 1X sensor on the cam to control fuel timing. Uh, that's not seemingly working. I haven't dived into that uh, again to figure out what was going on with that. I just put it on untimed sequential and it runs fine off of untimed sequential. Other than that, we did add a fuel pressure uh, connector to the bleed valve on the front of the fuel rail. Nice little setup. This thing was cheap. This was cheap, I think, for about 50 bucks. You get fuel pressure in, and of course, there's already a connector. There's a few spare connectors back there that are not being used. A couple of those are for TPS and uh, the throttle for the uh, non drive by wire setup. This one, we're using the drive by wire setup, and we have the factory LS1 connector here, which has then been converted by me over to a short harness. Oh, sorry, my light died. Connected over to a short harness for the North Style size or style throttle body connector, which has been working great so far. Get this light over here. Then on top of it, uh, that's the, was the major part of the work. There's still a wiring mess back there. The Terminator Max is back there. We'll get a better look at it. But the rest of the sensors hooked up. Added the uh, two and a half bar map sensor. Had to do an adapter from the LS1 to LS3 style map sensor there. Uh, not quite understanding why it came with the LS1 style map sensor, but in the software, the GM LS2 or LS3 style, I should say, is the one that's supported. So the map sensor that would have plugged into this anyways is not supported. You have to go in and do the custom map uh, sensor on there, which I did originally. Uh, but I went ahead and switched it over to this style anyways because we're eventually going to boost this setup. A pain in the butt, nonetheless. Uh, not sure why they did that. I added a couple of fuses over here 
for different things such as the TCS and the ECM, which are then powered off of the uh, ignition relay source underneath there. There's another relay, I haven't mounted it up here, right here, that is triggered off the ignition relay. So what would normally turn on the factory ECU now turns on our, fact, our Terminator X and our uh, PCS2000 transmission controller. Uh, other than that, I tapped into the factory fuel relay, pulled it out. We're running it off of the Terminator Max fuel relay. Everything else is the same on that because this system was not a variable pressure system. It just bumps up to 60 PSI, 58 PSI runs there all day long. So no worries there. I'm trying to think of what else we ended up having to do. The big thing was, as I said, the ignition timing, getting that all sorted out and then making the individual harnesses uh, to adapt the connectors on the uh, North Star over. I had to dive in underneath the manifold a few times to do the crank sen uh, sensor because the crank sensor is square in the middle on the top. Uh, ended up using the 12 volt crank sensor and cam sensors instead of the five volt, but you just have to change the wiring on the harness. The harness was already set up for the 12 volt. I'd switched it over to the five volt style and put the five volt sensors in, but they did not match up to the connectors and I didn't wanna to have to redo the pinouts on the connectors or swap the connectors out in that situation. And so I went back over to the 12 volt. That has worked fine as far as the crank's concerned. Everything looks good there. And then on top of it, I tapped the crank sensor signal, sent it back over to the factory ECM. That gets it to the gauge cluster. Uh, so that part works great. And you can do that with any sensor for the most part, except for temperature sensors because they're resistance based. You cannot split those off into two. Uh, that's about it. Let me see if I can get in here and show you the Terminator Max a little bit better. Yeah, let's try this. So there's the unit. I built a bracket and it is mounted to the existing battery uh, plate that's down in there. So it's set up underneath there. The excess loom is coiled up underneath the, the uh, Terminator X there out of the way. And then, as I said, I just kind of need to mount some of this stuff and clean up. This is uh, additional wire. There's a uh, tack output if you were to need it. Then the uh, fuel relay wire, I haven't cut that down yet. That's just what all that excess is there. And so that's basically it from the front side. Okay, you would have seen my battery relocation already. Uh, underneath this panel, and the deck was probably going to shut on my head. Once again, this needs to be cleaned up underneath here also. There it goes, it's crushing me. But all that mess is just the PCS unit and then the cable to program it comes out, runs up into the cabin so I can program it from the seat. Pretty straightforward there. And then the harness goes out underneath that straight into the transmission. Ugh. I gotta, gotta get the hydraulic system finished off so that stops happening. But nonetheless, that's the, the PCS side of it. Pretty straightforward, the car's running. I'll get a video inside the car one of these days uh take you along for the ride see all that fun stuff so all of that being said what's my initial impressions on the terminator x well i'm fairly impressed by it for the price point it is a, f a pretty good unit uh a lot of the issues that i ran into were issues that are specific to trying to adapt a uh, harness for a specific engine that's not necessarily anything that's ever been done before. So if I had gone to the just base unit without the uh, specific harness, uh, some of those problems probably wouldn't have happened, but they weren't, you know, the end of the world kind of issues. It was easy to sort through, uh, and it was more of just a pain of getting everything hooked up on this specific motor. Getting the thing fired up was pretty easy. Once I got in there and saw that the same ordeal, I was firing this thing up, it was running a little bit lean. I went in onto the uh, startup enrichment tables, bumped those up, got it to start, and then I started letting it do its own thing where it learns. And sure enough, it learned, and we were about 20% off, which isn't that bad, given that we had no basis really, other than using that uh, uh, VE table from the XLR, the 2007 XLR, but on top of it, I've got injectors that are almost twice the size of that. And so there was some uh, consideration that had to been taken in for that. But so far it's ran great. I put about 10 miles on it. It's learning well. Uh, everything's starting to get dialed in. I'm starting to bump the timing back up. And we'll do more videos on that in the future so you can see the process and I'll go through kind of what I had to do to get the thing started up. But for now, I just kind of wanted to give you a review of how everything was going and, uh, 
there's going to be plenty of more content coming. As I said, I'm looking forward to hopefully here in the next couple of weeks uh, throwing uh, some nitrous at it maybe, see how it handles some nitrous, and then eventually we will jam an LS block in here and, and start making real power. So got any questions, any comments, things like that, make sure and hit up the comments. But for now, I'm going to get back to work, and you should too. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.